Order of Worship on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sin to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have done to none. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the responsive reading of the introit, as found in the middle of your bulletin. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will hope continually. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come. O oh God, from my from youth you have taught me. And I still your glorious deeds. Even so, to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me. And still I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those who know. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord Again, during Advent, we omit the hymn of praise, and we will continue with the salutation on page 156. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah in the 35th chapter. The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. 
the glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the excellency of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. And the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, the tongue of the dumb sing. For water shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals, where each lay, there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and a road. It shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go up on it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. With everlasting joy on their heads, they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading this morning comes from James in the fifth chapter. Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, a judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed to endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And they departed. Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments. Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven, greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to receive it, it is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the gospel of our Lord.
grace and peace be to you in Christ Jesus. Amen. The lesson today comes from the Gospel reading, verses 4 and 5. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. There ends a the text. Your fellow redeemed, John the Baptist is one of those figures in the Bible who stands like a statue on a pedestal. He's a rock of faith, unmovable, unaffected by the controversies swirling around him. He is the very model of faith we all wish we could be. John didn't fear death. He didn't let people's negativity and slander get to him. He went through life knowing that when his death came, Jesus would present him clean and pure before the Heavenly Father. But in the lesson today, we see something in this pillar of faith that's very human, something very familiar. There's a chink in John's armor. There's doubt in his heart. Even this man of faith who defied death has doubts and uncertainty in his heart. In the reading today, John sends two of his followers to Jesus to ask him, are you the coming one or do we look for another? Now, how could John not know who Jesus is? John the Baptist is the one who stood in the middle of a crowd and pointed at Christ and said, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He knew who Jesus was. And John is the one whom when Jesus came to him to be baptized, John said, you're coming to me to be baptized. I have need to be baptized by you. John knew Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God, God incarnate. Nobody knew it better. So how can it be in the reading today that John has to ask a question like this? Are you the coming one or not? What happened to create that kind of doubt in this man? The answer is, life happened. Things in John's life had turned sour. The expectations he had for what the Messiah would do just weren't panning out. At this point in history, John is sitting in prison. He's not preaching or teaching anymore. He's locked up because he dared to tell Herod that it was wrong for him to steal his brother's wife and then live with her. And Herod didn't like people telling him what to do or not to do. So he arrested John, threw him into some dark corner of his dungeon. Now John sat there alone in a cell, lots of time on his hands. His followers were able to come and visit him. For the most part, John was there alone, darkness, hurting. He was human. He didn't know where things were going to end up with Herod. He didn't know if he'd be sitting there rotting in that jail for years or if he'd be executed or what. He just didn't know. But what he did know was that things weren't quite going the way he expected. Nor were things turning out in the nation of Israel as John expected. The Messiah was supposed to usher in a new era for God's people. He was God's chosen deliverer, sent to rescue God's people, but in the years since John first declared him to be the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world, nothing really changed. Jesus did not amass a huge following. All the same evil political leaders who were in place before Jesus were still in place after him. The nation of Israel was as faithless as ever. The Roman Empire still controlled all of the known world. John expected the Messiah to shake things up. Jesus hadn't. That's why the questions and the doubts start to seep into John's heart. So he sends his followers for a straight answer. Are you the coming one or should we look for another? Jesus is patient. He's not insulted by this. And he gives John a straightforward answer that John would have understood clearly. Go tell John the things that you hear and see. The 
blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. You might not know it, but right there, Jesus is actually quoting the Old Testament. He's quoting the prophet Isaiah specifically. And that's a prophecy John would have known. John was raised the son of a priest. He was taught what the prophets said. He, he knew the prophets' words by memory, especially Isaiah. And Isaiah had said in the 35th chapter, as he was describing the Messiah, that when the Messiah came, the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute shall sing. And later, in the same work of Isaiah, the prophet says that the Messiah would preach good tidings to the poor and heal the brokenhearted. It was God's word that established what the Messiah would do. And Jesus wanted John to know that that word of God was being fulfilled in him. That was the answer John needed. He shouldn't worry that things weren't going the way he expected them to go. Because Jesus, as God's son, was doing exactly what God said he would do. It was all playing out exactly according to God's plan. That exchange between John and Jesus is a good one for us to see today. Because even though we are a people of faith, and we sit here as a people who believe in Jesus as our Savior, who know we are loved by God because of what our Savior has done for us, we are still a people of weakness and sin and doubt. Why? It's for the same reasons as John's doubt. Because this world pushes us pretty hard. Things don't always go the way we think they should go as God's people. Our expectations of what we think God ought to be accomplishing in our lives for us don't always quite pan out. So like John, our human weakness gets the better of us. And we have doubts. I think deep down inside of all of us, there is a, a fundamental belief that because we are people of faith, because we are children of God, that things in this life ought to go just a little bit better for us. Jesus loves us. So he's going to make us winners in this world. He's going to keep the really bad things from happening to us, right? Right? when those bad things do happen, then we find ourselves on the losing end, we question God. Where is he? Why isn't he doing what we expected him to do? Does he even love us? Our inner sin and weakness falter, and we give in to doubt, just like John did. And doubt in the hearts of sinful people like us can lead to all kinds of problems. Doubt can breed unbelief. Now it can create resentment between us and God, anger towards him. It can turn us against God. We, like John, need to be reminded of what God's word actually does say we should expect of the Messiah in this life. When we stick by that word and not by our own false expectations, then we're on safe ground. Blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. That's what God's word said the Messiah would do when he walked this earth. Well, now our Messiah walks the earth no more, not like he did in his first incarnation. So what should we expect of Christ now that he has ascended into heaven and no longer walks among us like he did? God's word does actually tell us where our expectations should be. God's word tells us that the one thing we can expect of Christ is love and forgiveness. 
In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. That's what God says to us in Ephesians. Jesus himself promises that even after he ascends into heaven, he will make peace between us and the heavenly Father. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give. He promises he will send us his Holy Spirit to give us faith and make our faith grow. He promises he will be with us in all our trials and frustrations and disappointments that he'll never abandon us. God's word is filled with things in which we can trust. Promises that God won't ever break to us. But they are all promises of spiritual deliverance and of eternal glory, not promises to temporally fix all our little problems that come up. In fact, God's word also promises us that in this life we can expect problems and pains. You will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And many will be offended, will betray one another, will hate one another. Lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. It doesn't matter if we have strong faith or weak faith. Life is going to be hard. We are going to be abused at times. People are going to betray us. Even a pillar of faith like John the Baptist had to endure a hard life and things did not get better for him. In fact, after sitting in prison there for a little while, John the Baptist met with a terrible end. Herod's wife tricked Herod. Herod had to execute John the Baptist to keep a stupid promise that he had made. They cut off John's head. They brought it to Pharaoh on a platter. So the world did its worst on John the Baptist. He did not find deliverance in the temporal things of this life, but John was still a winner. He died in the arms of Christ's grace, knowing Jesus was the fulfillment of God's promises, knowing that his sins were cleansed and that God would welcome him into an eternal kingdom. John was saved and given a place in heaven just as God's word promised. And John died believing in that. The reality we have to face in this life is that we might very well have to endure some pretty serious pains and disappointments. There are going to be things coming at us we never saw coming. And it might not miraculously just get all better. Death itself might take us. In fact, death will take each one of us. But none of that should make us question or doubt our Savior. All these temporal disappointments and pains in no way, shape, or form annul the promises God has actually made to us in his word. In fact, they confirm God's promises because he says these things are going to come. Today, as we sit here, we have real promises that we can trust in. Certainties from God that he will never take away from us. He will be there for us in every dark valley. God will never leave us or forsake us. Our Savior is there for us all the time. And every moment of every day, he will hold us in his grace. Wash us clean of all of our sins here through his word and his sacrament. And uphold us in his love. That will never change. Life changes. Life pushes us hard. But the grace and the love of God are constants, and in that we need never doubt. So may our Savior this day strengthen us with true faith and chase our doubts away in Christ's love. Amen. Now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
We continue by confessing our saving faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which is on page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with the glory to judge both the living and whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is followed by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead. pray. O Lord Jesus, word of God made flesh, we thank and praise you that through your Holy Spirit you have directed our hearts and faith before you. You have indeed proven yourself to be our sin bearer and substitute under God's wrath, and you have delivered us from all of our fears by becoming our offering. Through your Holy Spirit, keep us now in true repentance so that we might confess our sins and constantly receive your forgiveness. O Savior of the world, send us your Holy Spirit to enliven and increase our faith. Grant that this forgiveness that we have received might spread to the world around us and use our humble witness to testify to others that they too might enjoy your grace. Increase our faith so that with your help, we might not be given to doubt or worry. Help us daily to trust in you, even in the face of hardship, that we might never be disappointed, and that our expectations might be set on your love. Heavenly Father, we pray this day as well that you might be with Gary Hendrick, brother of Kathy Zebel, that you might send your help to him as he recovers from his accident. Give him faith and strength to trust in your will and grant him physical healing as you in your gracious goodwill see fit. And finally, Lord God, we pray that you might bring all of your children safely to yourself in heaven, that you might strengthen them in this life, and that you might unite us with your saints to sing your praises and rejoice daily in the love shown us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.